Hidetoshi Nakata, Tokyo, 2018. Introduction It's a cold December night in Kyoto, the ancient capital of Japan. I've cycled through the darkness to Shorinin, a small temple off the tourist trail at the foot of the Higashiyama Mountains. Tonight, the temple gardens are gently illuminated, the low light spinning a mysterious yarn across the silhouetted pines and chimerical bamboo groves. I remove my shoes and step inside, onto a floor polished to a high shine by 800 years of shuffling footsteps and swishing robes. The wide floorboards, mottled and darkened with age, hail from the imperial palace. I take a seat on the wraparound veranda at the back, toes numb from the cold and breath visible in front of my face. Incense fills the air. It smells like the colour purple in a way I cannot explain. Tiny lights scattered across the garden fade in and out, a thousand stars breathing in unison. Just ten minutes away, the entertainment district of Gion is bustling with the energy of excitable tourists, drunken businessmen and attentive geisha. But here, up a narrow sloping road on the eastern edge of the city, I have found stillness. Overhead, a chenille moon is peeping through the trees, casting its silvery spell across the pond. Fallen leaves skate over the surface as koi carp skulk through the milky waters below. A week from now, the branches of many of these trees will be bare, a month later perhaps cloaked in snow. I pick up a fallen momiji leaf, blushing burgundy and curling at the edges. It's a treasure, crinkled and papery like the back of my grandmother's hand. A space in my heart opens up. Right now, I have everything I need. I feel quiet contentment, tinged with melancholy, in the knowledge that this fleeting moment will never return. This is the world of Wabi Sabi. Discovering Wabi Sabi Wabi Sabi is fundamental to the aesthetic sense and gentle nature of Japanese people. It's a worldview that guides the way they experience life, although it's rarely discussed. Its influence is everywhere, and yet it's nowhere to be seen. People instinctively know what the concept of wabi sabi represents, but few can articulate that. It's a fascinating enigma which promises to whisper potent wisdom to those who slow down enough to investigate and approach with an open heart. I've been visiting Japan for over two decades and lived here for almost a third of that time. The affinity I've always felt with Japanese people belies my upbringing on the other side of the world. I've immersed myself in the culture, lived with Japanese families who speak no English, worked in the complex worlds of Japanese business and local government, spent way more than 10,000 hours studying, and travelled widely throughout the land. And yet, despite all this, a true definition of the soulful concept of wabi-sabi has remained elusive. I could sense it, but lacked the words to explain it. A number of other non-Japanese have delved into the world of wabi-sabi before me, and most have focused on the physical characteristics of objects and environments they associate with the idea. But those explanations have always fallen short for me. I've long had a sense that wabi-sabi goes much deeper than we've been led to believe flowing into many areas of life. It wasn't until I started to research this book that I realised just how deep that river runs. Why Wabi Sabi? In recent years, society has gathered pace, our stress levels have gone through the roof and we've become increasingly obsessed with money, job titles, appearances and the endless accumulation of stuff. There's a growing sense of discontent as we push ourselves harder and juggle more. We're overworked, overstretched and overwhelmed. As someone who spent the best part of a decade helping people realign their priorities to build a life focused on doing what they love, I have seen how so many of us are making ourselves ill with overcommitment, constant comparison, judgment and negative self-talk. We're sleepwalking through our days, senses dulled, spending much of our time cooped up in boxes, paying more attention to celebrities, advertising and social media than to the exploration of our own lives in all their rich potential. For some time now, I've been hearing the growing rumblings of a slow revolution, a yearning for a simpler, more meaningful life. A life infused with beauty, connected to nature, thrumming with the energy of everyday well-being and built around what really matters to us.